Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is January 18th of 2018, and I ordered this from Amazon, Software Defined Radio. This will be my first messing with it. Um, I started shortwave listening in 1955. And that was my hobby. I did a radio pro DXing program that was broadcast around the world <clears throat> over WRUL radio. I uh, ran a uh, club, a shortwave listeners club. Uh, did all sorts of things. Uh, let me see if that book is here. It's inside. It's, it's a, oh yeah. Anyway, there's a book on shortwave listening, and I'm featured in it uh, several times in the book. So the point is that I have a lot of experience with shortwave uh, radio and DXing and all that type of stuff. And then years later, I became an amateur radio operator. And I don't do an awful lot of amateur radio stuff, and not as expected. Software defined radio is fairly new. It really interests me. I mean, so, wow. The, you know, my first radio was a Helicrafter's uh, S38D. It had five tubes. You probably don't know what tubes are. Anyway, I just received this, and I thought what I might do is actually try to set it up. Uh, here on probably a bad idea. Probably you know how it is. Things always pop up that you're not expecting. But here's um, this. Is, I guess you call it. Would you call this a dongle? Anyway, this plugs into your computer USB, and then you hook your antenna up to it. And they, as you can see, they supply antennas and cable and what have you. Uh, if if you have an external antenna outside, if you're an amateur radio operator or a shortwave listener or a DX or something, you know, you can hook that up. Now, I looked at the, I looked at uh, a bunch of, here's, uh, this will kind of give you a little bit of an idea of what, you know, you're going to see. That's the software. So you have the hardware, which this is like 20 bucks. I think it was 26 altogether. And you can pick up all sorts of stations and do all con all sorts of decoding with different software. And uh, you don't need much, be you know, because you're using your computer. And, I mean, you have this uh, important part. And there's different manufacturers that make, you know, this one is like, say 20 bucks I see a real nice one that's uh, front made in the UK that is $200 it should be a lot better and they have their own software and what have you but I want to see what this would do and uh, I'm thinking of setting it up now and maybe I should do this on a live video um, but anyway there's different videos on YouTube uh, talking about how to set these up and reviewing them and what have you but so you can see all the components uh, here's what this looks like inside the circuit board here are the antennas here's different ways you can hook up you know things you can do with their antennas So this includes uh, the uh, RTL SDR brand, and I'll give you all this kind of, you know. So they do call it a dongle, version 3. It says it's great for many applications, radio scanning, air traffic control, well, monitoring air traffic control, not controlling aircraft with this. Um Public safety, fire, EMS, or whatever. A lot of those here in the United States have 
are gone to uh, trunking systems and they're going to digital encoded. And well, the trunking would be digital. They've, they're going to encoded. Just, I don't know, maybe last year or whatever, they, I'm in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, on a scanner, I could pick up the Fort Worth Police Department and uh, Fire Department and EMS, and they've totally gone over to encoded, and you cannot pick them up. Now, there are there is software for these that does different kinds of decoding, but you... Uh, cannot get software to decode these encrypted uh, police fire and EMS that they, if, if you could get somehow come up with some software that would do that, it would be illegal, be against the law in order to uh, decode it. But you can get tons of programs. You can decode uh, the signal that aircraft send out that's uh, encoded that gives their location or whatever. So you can sit here on, on your computer or laptop or whatever, and you could actually track aircraft and uh, you can decode all types of uh, ham radio signals and uh, stuff that are, you know, slow scan TV, and you could do all kinds of, of things. So I'm not sure exactly what this is going to uh, well, let's go back here to see what else they say you can. Um, public safety, ADSB, which I have no idea what that is. AIS, I have no idea what that is. A cars, I have no idea what that. Trunked radio, unless it's uh, now P25 digital voice. That's what the fire departments and police departments and things here in the United States are going to for public safety and they are afraid that terrorists could monitor their other, you know, which I, I really think it's a mis Well, it's good for them to go to digital and good for them to go to systems that they can interconnect and that they can decide who they want messages to go out to and all that kind of stuff. I really think that uh, it's a mistake. They would not agree that... Uh, I think they should have, not all of them, I mean, if you have detectives on a channel, which they do, and you have a uh, narcotics unit or anti-terrorism, you know, but I think there should be a channel that is in the clear that citizens could listen to to get an idea of what is going on, but they would disagree with that. Of course, who do you, who are you going to believe, them or me? Uh... P-O-C-S-A-G, have no idea. Weather balloons. A lot of ham radio operators also send up uh, weather balloons. And uh, APRS. I, uh, um, now, ham radio operators have all different types of, of radios. This one is uh, uh, ham radio two bands. Uh, two meters and 440. This actually is a digital one, but also will do analog like this other one. But this one uh, does uh, digital. It's a digital radio, DMR, and uh, pretty neat. Problem with ham radio is that there's three or four for this. Uh, voice communications or whatever, there's there's not a standard. But then some of the manufacturers are working up, the, the, have out already their ways to interconnect them that are, that are pretty neat. So I, this is, both of these were inexpensive radios. Used to be ham radios were really expensive. And now you can get $100 or less. You can get from China these these radios, and they're great. I mean, they work fine. But then there are some uh, much more expensive HT handy talkies that uh, 400, uh, 500, 600, and more that have all types of really neat features. 
I haven't really decided on if I want to go, and I've in the past had them and, you know, sold them. I've had a bunch of different uh, ones like that. Right now I just have uh, these El Cheapo ones. Um, radio astronomy, meter scatter, monitoring. Uh, a long time ago, uh, MIT set up uh, a research group, research group C, or was that, wait a minute, no, was it, what was it? Satellite Scatter Coordination, that was it. Uh, MIT, Satellite Scatter Coordination, and I headed up Research Group C, that's right, that was for shortwave listeners, and we conducted some experiments. The United States in the past injected uh, little tiny needles into the ionosphere. There were concerns from scientists at what it, you know, and we can, research group, ham radio operators were doing things, and we did things to see if uh, it degraded the signal between different stations going through the ionosphere. Uh, we did research uh, when a uh, eclipse happened on the broadcast band, those lower frequencies. And then the United States also detonated in outer space uh, one or more nuclear weapons uh, to see what that would do to the ionosphere. It should have increased, and we did some monitoring on that when it happened. I think I was monitoring uh, in Kansas City, Missouri. I was monitoring signals in New Zealand and Australia. and what, All types of things go on. And so... Uh, meteor scatter as a meteor goes is coming in to the Earth's atmosphere or even as, as satellites and things are up there uh, you can get signals that will be enhanced and travel further because they're using the ionization or whatever of them going you know so don't want to go into all that just I get there again, I'm trying to let you know, hey, I have a little bit of experience with some of this stuff. But this is all new to me, but it's really exciting. Okay, it looks like this device, you can tune from 500 kilohertz up to 1.8 gigahertz. That takes in pretty much everything. And the area you can see on your screen, uh, of course, it's adjustable. So let me give you a different maybe view of, uh, so here you can see this, this person is uh, monitoring uh, two me or 440 ham band. And right now he's listening on 448.060. And, uh, but it looks like this one up to 1.5 gigahertz that, uh, but we'll see how that works out. Oh, the bandwidth. You can, the more bandwidth, you, so you can watch, as you could probably tell on that, you know, you can be listening and then you can see, and if you see a signal pop up, you know, a spike on the, uh, like the oscilloscope or whatever. It's on your screen though. Um, now, a lot of the big ham radios, I think also maybe some of the H. I don't think I had one, but I think now some of them have, of course, it's smaller, but you can be monitoring a frequency or actually you can be monitoring two at the same time. And all you can see on the scope, you'd see a bip, a blip, a spike or whatever. And you could, okay, somebody's transmitting over there and you could tune over there pretty, but this is even neater because you can use your computer or laptop, desktop or laptop. Uh, meteor scatter, DAB, I have no idea what that is. So, um, I guess let's start hooking this thing up. Well, wait, I wonder if there's some instructions in here. No. <laughs> I guess it's a good thing to have those YouTube videos.
Well, wait, let's see. Really, is there is there going to be a uh, link? Let's go down here and see. Okay. Um, okay, here we go. Quick start guide. Uh, V3 features antenna guide. Now, these do not look like... Okay, here we are. Okay, that is... Well, it doesn't say HTG, but we're going to have to... Let's see, quick start setup. Okay, so we're going to copy this. I guess I could just go to it. Let's try that. Well, no, I want to copy that. Because then I want to go over here myself. And paste it. Oh, okay. So here we are. Um, quick start guide. Okay, it looks like they cover everything. But it, you know what? Looks like this may be a uh, quick start guy. Let's see. Yeah, this looks like it's going to be a, a uh, project that I want to take my time on. Make sure I do everything correct. And I don't want to be, if I'm making this video, uh, I'm going to be rushed. I'm going to rush myself. And so I'm going to... Okay, this is antenna, antenna. It's really... I can't... Uh, I would need to install drivers and all that type of stuff. And then this would be the last thing that I would plug in. So... Um, I think I'm going to call it quits and just let you know that um, this is a project and I think what I'll do when I get it set up because there are people who have made videos here on YouTube they go through the steps of setting it up and then too you have the guide here on setting this up. So I'll put the link where you can buy this and I'll put the links where you can read the quick start guide and the features guide and the antenna guide. But I think I'll wait until, or I won't put the guide where you can download the software until, or, you know, let you do that when you, uh, but uh, if I can remember which one of these, and I'll check, I probably have to add it later below here. If I see who is using this exact, and I think it's, I think this is one, and who does this getting started and set up, I'll put the link to this guy's, and it looks like this may be the one that matches up with, you know, the one I have here. So, um, so how do we want to end this right now? What else do I want to tell you? Uh, because I want to put the antenna. I live in an apartment complex, unfortunately, and I don't have any external antennas or whatever. So I'm moving stuff around again. Not my computer desk and that, but some other stuff around. And I'm going to have the antennas here in the window on the inside. And my computer is right here. So, uh, guess I'll get started on get started on that today. It's almost two p.m. and I haven't taken today's the eighteenth, and I haven't taken the my morning medication yet. So I'll do that and then start on this project. Then when I get it working, if I get it working, which I think I probably will, but you never know with you know computers in situations like this. Um, I think when I get it working, I'll uh, at some point do a live stream.
streaming video on YouTube and we can play with it. You can see me playing with it and uh, we'll see how that works out. So thank you very much for watching. Okay, this is part two. I got the software installed. I printed out 18 pages of how to install the driver just to make sure. I mean, most of you probably would, uh, you know, just look at it on your screen and do it. I printed it out to make sure I didn't mess it up. And I just messed it up, by the way. <laughs> Not the driver, but uh, I was listening to... Uh, FM radio stations, commercial stations, and I was um, listening to the National Weather Bureau Service, and then I listened to some hams. I couldn't do anything on the AM broadcast band and on the shortwave bands or HF, high frequency bands. And then I remembered one of the videos that I watched here on YouTube a uh, gentleman made a video and he said, I'm not going to, <coughs> excuse me, go into detail because so-and-so did a YouTube video and he did a really good job of explaining everything. But he said one thing I discovered, he said that uh, he could not pick up HF shortwave band and AM band and that he found that, and I thought about writing it down. I thought, oh no, it'll be, so I've got to uh, find his video because uh, someplace in these settings, he went someplace and I can't find it now. And he put in a number like 1 million and then went down a little bit to 9 million and something, 9 million, 9, and that brought up the, uh, and I've been looking for it here. In fact, I was messing, that's how I messed things up. I was thinking, well, you know, so I hit some, buttons that I've messed it up. I have to go back and get it uh, back to what I had it before. Then I got to go watch this guy's, uh, and I'll put the link to his video below. And then if I can remember, I'll put the link to the guy that he recommended, a YouTube video, and I'll put the link to that. And uh, But anyway, it worked $20. And, oh, what I did do, though, is I have a scanner antenna and I had an adapter, and uh, well, yeah, when I was using their antennas, uh, not very good reception. I'm not sure exactly. So then I hooked up my uh, antenna that I bought for scanner, for a scanner that I have, and uh, it worked much better. World of difference. So I'll, I guess I'll put a link below to the scanner antenna too in case you want to buy it but you may be able to find one that's higher uh, recommended better or something I'll, I'll put the link though to the one that I got so this works if you want to play with something for twenty dollars now I think you probably already know that you can go to radioreference.com and you they have hundreds if not thousands of police and fire uh, channels that you can click on same thing with the, uh, there's a cell phone app. Now I pay for, you can use it for free, but you get some benefits if you uh, pay. And I've paid for years. Let's see. Uh, okay. I was just uh, messing with... Uh, few days ago and I see I have not installed that app okay anyway it's um, I'll have to install that on my cell phone I'm always messing with things and it's uh, very confusing for an old man so um, you know, meow are you going to bite me or something? Are you going to scrape on the microphone, huh? You're going to chew on the cable, huh? 
so anyway, I'll try to. Now I may not get those links in immediately because I got to go find them, and I have other things. Oh, DD, my chair, my chair, DD, 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 my chair. Don't do that. So anyway, I'll put the links below. Oh, I wanted to tell you, radioreference.com is a site that you can go. There is also, oh, I know how I can find it. Wait a minute. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Uh, nope. Are we going to open? Yeah, here we're going to open up. So there are sites that you can go to and hear all, like, and too, if something happens, let's say there's a shooting in Georgia or something, rather, you can go to radioreference.com. You go to the list of uh, things, and probably the site will be at the top of, you know, the list, and you can go and listen to police calls. Let's see. We want to find ham radio. Here it is. Uh, now you can put this app on your cell phone also. This is a great place for information about listening. And uh, if you're using the, this program here, great place to find what frequencies uh, you should try to uh, listen to. Now there are also... Uh, Places you can go like globaltuners.com. And you go here and you log in. And all over the, the world there are amateur radio operators. Or it don't have to be a radio op amateur radio operator. Usually they are. But there are people who have their commercial really nice. I can't afford one. Uh, communications receiver. I mean in the old days I started shortwave listening in 1950. Five, and uh, went through various radios, but um, they have you know radios that are two, three, four thousand dollars. Communications receivers with all refinements hooked to the internet, and you can go to uh, here someplace a place to click on it, and they'll be in Australia and New Zealand, Germany or whatever, and you click on it. Now, that it may vary depending. Some people will let you tune their receiver. And uh, some will only let you tune their receiver, I think, if you're an amateur radio operator or if you're registered or things like that. But I've, I've done that sometimes. Uh, go to, you know, Australia and pick some guy's site and listen to the local FM and AM radio station on the thing and then go to listen on the shortwave band and that type of so there's a lot of things out here but this uh, uh, what are we calling it digital what I what do we call that I forget digital software radio pretty neat and this device is only twenty dollars uh, there's a I looked at I'll put the link to that company. Well, I want to keep it simple for you. So I'll put these links in there. I may not get them in tonight. I have to find them and paste the link in or whatever, but they will be. And if you have a links or whatever, put them below. Uh, thank you very much for watching.